morning, everybody. Those of you who don't know me, my name is Rod Book. I'm going to be reading the scripture. I've got to have these on. I got to, I'm going to be reading the scripture lesson this morning. It comes from John 6, verse 51 through 58. And we're encouraging everybody, if they, if they can, if they have a Bible at home, bring it with you. Start carrying it with you to church. We're going to, uh, you'll see the reason why. It'll make you feel wonderful. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I believe I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Hey, Rod. Oh, hey, Brandon. Did you need something? Well, you called me. Uh, no, I didn't. Well, I guess while I have you on the phone, I wanted to let you know I can't make it to Bible study today. That's too bad. Did something come up? Well, sort of. I never got around to reading my Bible. Rod, it's Wednesday. Bible study isn't for four more days. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just super busy, and I don't think I'll get around to it. Big weekend ahead? Yeah, I have work, bowling, jazz choir. I didn't know you were in jazz choir. One night I'm washing my hair, mow the lawn, tap dance lessons. Wait, wait, didn't I just see you sharing funny cat videos on Facebook? Yeah, weren't they cool? (laughs) Rod, you could have been reading your Bible, and you barely have enough hair to wash for 30 seconds, unless (laughs) unless you're talking about the hair on your back. Okay, okay. It's just, well, boring. You realize that this is the way to get closer to your Savior, someone who died for you, and the creator of the universe. Yeah, I know. But it's not as fun as reading my Walking Dead comic books. Well, have you ever heard the story of Ehud? He assassinated the evil king, but the king was so big when Ehud stabbed him, his fat closed in around the entire sword, and then his bowels discharged. Whoa, now we're talking. I love a good bowel discharge story. (laughs) And what about Samson killing 1,000 Philistines with a donkey jawbone? Wow, that's cool. Or Jesus flipping the tables in the temple? Or Jesus dying for our sins? Or Jesus rising from the dead? Okay, I guess that sounds more interesting than I thought. But the Bible's so hard to understand. Well, you probably need a different version, Rob. You're reading the 16th century translation. There are so many thou's and these in there that Shakespeare would blush. I didn't realize there were different versions of the Bible. Yep. Maybe even get a life application study Bible. It has easy to read explanations that go verse by verse while you read. Okay. I guess I can make time and it does sound interesting, but it doesn't seem like it would apply to my life. Are you kidding? You say you don't have time, but the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God. Yeah, but... You say it's boring, but the Bible says angels will separate the, weak, the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the burning furnace where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. How does that not keep you up at night? Well, I don't sleep that well. And you say you don't understand, but the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart 
and lean not on your own understanding. Rod, your soul could be at stake. Wow, buddy, that's intense. What do I do? Well, commit to coming to Bible study, commit to reading your Bible every day, and commit to God. Okay, Brandon. I'll see you on Sunday at Bible study. That's awesome. But tell me, you really sing in jazz choir? There's a lot of reasons to not read your Bible and to not come to Bible study, but none of them are good enough to take the place of our Lord and our Savior. Join us as we learn more about the Bible this coming fall. No excuses. Good morning. I'm Tom Drehaas. And you may be wondering why we brought our A-list actors out this morning for the skit. <laughs> Today we'll be sharing testimonies as it relates to the Bible. I think many of us can relate to the excuses that Rod had in the skit. Currently, I lead the men's group on Saturday mornings, and we're going through a Bible, the Bible, in a year. And through this study, we have seen lives changed and relationships with Christ renewed. So how do we, as a congregation, Make the leap to getting in the word every day. Well, let me first tell you my story and how it led me to be up here talking to you today. We are all born as many things. Personally, I was born as a German and a Bohemian, so I'm both mean and dumb. I was born a Drehaas, which comes with a dry sense of humor and a horrible golf game. My wife says I was born with two left feet and my staff at work says I was born as an adult. In reality, I was born as a pastor's kid. My dad worked as a shoe repairman in Belle Plaine, Iowa, and a pastor at Vining Christian and Missionary Alliance Church. Because I grew up in the church, I always jokingly say that I was also born as a Christian. Now I realize that nobody can actually be born as a Christian. I know we all need to repent and be saved. However, I never had that aha moment where I felt like I was changed. I can't actually remember a time in my life where I didn't believe in Christ. In fact, the first time I ever read the Bible was when I was 10 years old. It was a thick comic book Bible, and my dad told me he'd give me a big reward if I finished it. So when I finally did, months later, he gave me a bag of Skittles. And to a 10-year-old who had just spent months reading the Bible and thinking they were getting a dirt bike, it was very disappointing. However, God was at work. After that, I went to church and youth group, and mom and dad talked about God a lot at home, but I didn't really start reading the Bible again till college. I went to college at the University of Iowa, which isn't exactly the Christian epicenter of the Midwest. It was there I learned to be skeptical, which is not a bad thing in and of itself. However, when skepticism meets a know-it-all know college student, it quickly becomes cynicism. I remember trying to do a Bible study over the phone with my future wife, Brooke, and reading Matthew 12:47, which says, Someone told Jesus, your mother and your brothers are outside, and they want to speak to you. And Jesus asked, who is my brother? mother? Who are my brothers? I read that, and I was so frustrated. Why couldn't he just answer them? Why does he talk like that? They're just asking about his family. Why can't he be clear? And that frustration carried over the years. However, a small voice in my head told me, just keep reading the Bible. And so I did. Not daily, but with some regularity, I read the Bible. As time went on, and as I read more, and prayed more, attended church more, and attended a small group, I found myself slowly being changed. Again, there was no aha moment, but instead a slow transformation. A few years back, I went to a Promise Keepers conference and the speaker had us repeat a verse out of 1 Corinthians, which says, When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. I now realize through the study of Scripture, I have changed. I am no longer a child. I may have been born a mean German, a dumb Bohemian, a Drehaas and a pastor's kid, but these things no longer define who I am. I have been reborn, transformed, and I am a child of God. Now you may be asking, 
why are we discussing the Bible and transformation this morning? It's because you can have this too. Some of you may be thinking, the Bible is too hard to understand. Well, I read it as a child, and I've continued to gain knowledge from there through study and help from other people. Some of you may be thinking, I'm too busy for this. Well, to that I say, I have four children, a full-time job, a part-time job, an hour drive every day, work out five days a week, run a small group on Saturday mornings, run a men's basketball league once a week, and listen to my wife's daily play-by-play of whatever happened last night in Downton Abbey. And I still find 15 to 30 minutes a day to read the Bible. And in fact, it is the best part of my day. And some of you guys out there may be saying, well, it's not manly to read the Bible. Well, to that I say, I fish, I lift weights, I beat up teenagers in basketball, I have a beard, I pop joints back into place at work, sew up blood and guts, drive over the speed limit, can talk for football hours, and I'm a millennial, so I was born cooler than you. (laughs) And yet every day the manliest thing that I do is read God's word and learn what it is to be a real man. All of us giving our testimonies this morning want you to have what we have. We don't do it out of selfish ambition or pride, but out of obedience to God and love for you all. Therefore, I would like to announce that we are kicking off a new initiative for our church. We want to be known as a Bible teaching church. We want all of our members to own a Bible and to bring it to church every week. We want everyone to read the Bible and study the Bible. And that's just the beginning. I want to close today by bringing you back to the scripture that got me so upset in college. It says this, Someone told Jesus, Your mother and your brothers are outside, and they want to speak to you. And Jesus asked, Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? And it's the next line that's so important to me now. Pointing to his disciples, he said, Here are my mothers. Here are my brothers. I may have been born German, Bohemian, a Drehas and a pastor's kid, but you are all my mothers and my brothers, my friends and my family. I get that now that I have made a commitment to scripture and to God. I will leave you with our mission statement for our new Bible initiative. To provide an opportunity to discover, rediscover, and strengthen the connection between scripture, God, and spiritual maturity. We hope you join us in this journey. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to start out with a couple things. First, I'm not good at reading in front of people, so I'm going to stare down the whole time and probably not look up. And second, um, Margie never checked me before I went out of the house, so I don't know if I have food and stuff all over me. Oh, I'm Blake Zuber. I am not someone who thinks I have it all figured out. Quite the opposite. I live most of my life with my eyes closed. God opened my eyes by having the worst thing in my life happen to me. He smacked me upside the head hard and made me realize I can't fix this without him. Sonia had said during service one Sunday that you can't truly understand until you open your heart to him. At the time, I didn't know exactly what that meant, but I do now. Don't answer this, But how many people would feel strange walking around in public with a Bible? I probably would. Isn't that really sad? I don't know where any of you are with your walk with God, but I will tell you the truth about me. I am nothing without God. I am nothing without consistency. Consistency in praying and opening up my Bible. I have found it takes about two seconds for me to start wandering away from him. This world pulls us away from him. Just turn on the TV and you can see how certain shows make you think some sins are okay and some aren't. Studying the Bible is a way I have found that brings me back to the right way of thinking. 
I used to try and read some of the Bible and thought to myself, what in the world is this talking about? I couldn't read it. I'd fall asleep. I'd fall honestly fall asleep in about two minutes. But then our men's group started doing the one-year Bible study. I found an application Bible that tells you what they are talking about. And I found the more I learn, the more I want to learn. Instead of reading it, I started listening to it on audio Bible when I'm hauling corn or when I'm sitting in the semi waiting in line. The key to studying it for me has been having different guys in our group who truly understand it. You have to have someone who can explain to you why the Old Testament is the way it is and what message is the reading trying to tell you. This church is truly blessed having Louie leading us. His knowledge about the Bible is, is amazing to me. When you ask him for advice about something happening in your life, he doesn't just shoot from the hip and give you his opinion. He can look up the verse that pertains to the problem and give you advice. I had another pastor I got to know, I think his name was James, tell me something in frustration one morning. Why don't people just study this book? It answers our questions. I should have said because you'd be out of a job, bud. I end with this. If I don't open it up daily or pray daily, I will drift. I hope that my words will help some, someone in this group. And I hope people do the thing God wants us to do and study his word. Thank you. Good morning. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Brandon Gingrich. I usually sit way back there. My parents and my better half know me. Um, I go to the Saturday morning men's group and been going through the Bible with them. And I was asked to share this testimony about how the Bible has changed my life. And so I'll just kind of tell you where I'm at right now. The first thing I do each morning is I, I get up and I read the Bible. Um, it's the only time I can focus on it. It's quiet, my phone hasn't started beeping, and honestly, it's the best part of my day. I look forward to it and I enjoy it. I use a study Bible that has notes in it that help explain to me um, context and, and history and things about the Bible that I have a hard time understanding and I, I just love doing it each day. Um, I've, I've tried to go through the Bible before and a couple different times and it's just it was very difficult it didn't work and even this time there was times where it's difficult and it takes a lot of discipline but now as I've gone through and I've learned more about the truth and the word it's, it's something that I want to do every day for, for here the rest of my life is study this book because God has given me the desire to read his word. And I've prayed and I continue to pray each day that he doesn't take that desire away from me. Because I, I used to be afraid when I was younger that I would never, you know, that Christians had this thing that I didn't have. And it wasn't until college until, until he... Uh, to the Holy Spirit guided me to this group, um, but I've kind of realized, you know, it's it's no matter how old you are, you're ne it's never too late to start. And I'm just glad that He reached out to me while I'm so young. There's a song, a Christian song, that says, "If we are the body, why aren't His arms reaching? Why aren't His hands healing? And why aren't His words teaching?" And so if we are the body of Christ, we need to, to read his word every day so we can teach his words. And from there, we can, we can share him effectively throughout the world. And it, it wasn't really till I committed to read through the Bible that I realized how wrong I was and how much I didn't know. And I just didn't under, 
fully understand what it was like to be a Christian, even when I thought I was. God opened my eyes and he let me see, and it's kind of unexplainable until you, until you realize it, but I have the Holy Spirit living in me. And we can get so much by learning from the words that Jesus says and from Paul's teachings. Even the Old Testament can teach us a lot. And we just finished the book of Nehemiah last week. And in the book of Nehemiah, the exiles return to Israel from Babylon. And and Ezra starts to read the law to the people that they had lost for a couple generations. And, And I don't know how they lost the word, but they were having it read to them again. And and they realized how wrong they were and how blind they were to the way God wanted them to live. And they were overwhelmed by his grace and how he kept pursuing them through all those times when they had turned away from him. And that kind of relates to me. That's, I think that can relate to everyone who, who reads the Bible and, and, and has the Holy Spirit. Um, their eyes are opened and they can see. And... That brings me to this other note in my Bible from Romans chapter 8. When we have the Holy Spirit and we read the Bible, we will begin to, to act as Christ directs us. We will find help in our daily problems and, and in our praying. We will be empowered to serve God and do his will, and we will become part of God's plan to build up his church. And that really kind of hit home to me because though I, I fall short in that, Every day, because I'm a sinner, I, I know that from this book I'm learning the truth of, of Jesus and, and how I'm saved, and it's really just an awesome thing. And to kind of wrap up, if you don't know me too well, I'm getting married here in about a month to my fiance Naomi, in the back. And people have been asking us recently, I, am I getting cold feet, or am I ready? And I don't, I don't think I'm giving them their typical answer, but I, I say because of this book, I feel like I'm more ready than I ever have been because we're both Christians and we're both sinners, but we're broken together, and we, we help encourage each other, and, and we pray together, and this book has really helped us um, in our relationship and another neat thing from, that I learned from the Bible, from Deuteronomy, chapter 24, verse 5. Long story short, we're supposed to honeymoon for a year, so we might want to rethink our honeymoon plans and, and change that. But um, anyway, I encourage everyone to, re- to, if you feel led by the Spirit, to just read your Bible. It's, it's never too late to start, and, and I just feel like it's, it's a necessary part of this journey together and being the body of Christ. So thank you for listening to me, and God bless. After 27 years of marriage, you still get cold feet. Um, I came to this church three years ago. Uh, I came, I've, I've been involved in church since I was a young child, since before I was born. I'm 53 years old. Uh, I'm, I came to this church because my son wanted me to come and listen to the contemporary music. And it, Sonia sold me the first day. James had an awesome message. Tom was on the video doing some kind of goofy skit. Um, and I didn't know him at that time, but I thought, well, this is a little different. But after getting involved in Bible studies here at the church, um, my life changed. The, the guys sitting in the front row and some are scattered throughout, go to the Bible study, the men's group Bible study. And like any Bible study that I've been part of here, you hear stories from people that um, were lost, still are lost like me. To quote Tom Drehaus, This is not a list of suggestions. It's a list of instructions. It's a direct route on how to get to heaven. But we're too busy. It's too hard to understand. 
if you come to a Bible study and you feel that Bible's hard to understand, there will be somebody there that will help explain it to you, help make sense of it for you. This group of kids down here in the front row have religiously been coming and sitting in the front rows during their confirmation classes. And this is a group, they also attend Wednesday night services when we have 611. Um, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to, there's a lot to follow that they do. Um, when they got back from SGU, I noticed, and Alexi, I'm going to use your name, um, there was, we were singing a great song, and Lexi's just got her hand up, just singing, not caring that her friends are right next to her. Blake asked how difficult it would be to carry a Bible around with you. Yeah, it's tough. But if you do it, I started raising my hand during some of the services because of the, the church that I went to, you didn't raise your hand, you didn't move, you had to wear the right, wear the right kind of clothes. If anybody talked, they got smacked in the back of the head by mom or dad. It, it's not that way. God wants us to come and worship together no matter what we're wearing, no matter how we're feeling that day. But how do we come to church and understand what's going on without studying the Bible. I thought I did. I, was, I thought I was a Christian. All I needed to know was that Genesis, God created the world, and the Ten Commandments are here, and I thought I had it all. Brandon mentioned losing the law. I lose the law every day. And if I don't stay in the Bible every day, I lose it over and over again. Fortunately, we belong to a men's group where Tom sends us out questions and we get on WhatsApp together. WhatsApp, if you know me, I am computer and phone illiterate, so they have to guide me through everything. But we keep each other accountable. The skit up here in front, there's a lot of truth behind that. There's a lot of truth on reasons why we don't get through it, because we're too busy. And I'm not in jazz band, by the way. Um, sometimes we don't read the Bible because it's gonna, we're going to see in there that we're not doing things right. We don't like to be told we're doing things wrong. We've got some religious leaders right now trying to tell us that the Bible's outdated. God didn't know what was going to happen in 2018, or he would have put it in the Bible. That's not true. When you go to school, when you go to college, you're going to hear people say that. This is the word. It doesn't change. It hasn't changed. And God knew when he created the world what was going to happen in 2018. As a matter of fact, he knows what college each and every one of you are going to go to and what you're going to do in your life. He knew that long ago. So don't we owe it to him to study? to help ourselves understand so that when someone comes to us and asks us a question about their salvation, that at least we know where to turn. I pray that each and every one of you can find what you need in life, but one thing I know you do need is eternal salvation. And the only way to get there is through Jesus Christ. I love each and every one of you, and if there's ever anything we can help you with, let us know. We're here for you. Thank you.